Hey guys, and welcome to another weekly reviews, thoughts, I guess you can call it that. Uh, this time we have the season finales of The Simpsons and Boss Burgers. Just a regular episode of Bless the Heart, and the season 2 one hour premiere of Duncanville. So, starting with The Simpsons and The Last Bar Fighter. This is a Mo episode where uh, he... Uh, He's in a secret society of bartenders, and when he breaks their most sacred rule to not drink with his so-called customers, or his friends, home being Homer, Lenny, Carl, and Barney, then the secret society uh, seeks revenge on Mo by uh, by giving his by trying to attack his friends with anti boobs. Uh, I'm not sure if anti boobs is real, but uh, in this show, apparently it is. Uh, and that's pretty much it, to be honest. Uh, it start. It has a good start, even with you know introducing Mo and the uh, Secret Society bartenders. I really like that. And then <laughs> it kind of goes in a kind of amusing kind of subplot where it kind of starts out with Bart winning uh, a secret bottle of tequila. <laughs> it was funny because I thought he was gonna choose the bike, uh, but he ends up choosing the bottle. So 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 basically, before he wins the prize, uh, him and Milhouse are at a show. A lot. It was. It's called like Spanish Krusty because Krusty lost his show again. He always loses his show for some reason, and then uh, he's uh, unwillingly uh, dragged on stage to play a game where uh, if you laugh at the jokes with horchata in your mouth, you lose. And their jokes are in Spanish, so Bart doesn't know Spanish, so that he doesn't laugh and then he wins. And then uh, it's shown that he's going to choose. Oh. There's between a vacuum, the sacred bottle, and a dirt bike, and then uh, and then it sh shoots to the dirt bike. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna choose. I have to choose the sacred bottle. I don't know why. I, I, it was just so unexpectedly funny that he chose that. Uh, I, I I thought this episode was uh, well paced. It had great story. It's funny throughout. Everything I really liked from the action scene where Mo's fighting all the bartenders to try to keep uh, it, try to keep. Uh, Homer and his friends safe uh, to even uh, and and him telling drunk jokes to them which I really like uh, it, it even goes into a pretty good twist with uh, Mo actually end up Mo actually ends up working with other people to get Homer uh, to take the anti booze after he runs away and then and then uh, what and then it, it goes on to show that Homer, Lenny, Carl, and Barney have better lives now that they can't drink anymore because of the anti booze And then Mo uh, ends up uh, ending up having to shut down his bar because he has no business. And then also, and then he works uh, at an omelet bar at a whole, at a nearby hotel. And then, so that when when Homer and his friends go to see him, they feel bad. So then they uh, they they want to hang out with Mo. And then uh, Mo reveals that he has. Uh, the secret to get them to drinking again, and uh, Barney, uh, Lenny, and Carl all just all want to drink again, despite how successful they've been without it. But then Homer, you know, he's like, "Oh, I have a family now." He got a promotion at a job. His family loves that he's not drinking anymore. Uh, so then uh, he refused to take it. So then <laughs> Mo has uh, Mo has the secret society chase him at the end uh, with a cliffhanger. Uh, it's kind of a cliffhanger, even though I'm pretty sure they get him, because continuity's living in The Simpsons. And, by the way, even though I thought this episode was great, it's because the timeline of The Simpsons, like, continuity, it, it literally doesn't matter, because The Simpsons is such a long-running show. It has over 700 episodes. They're bound to break continuity at least a few times. So I'm not too surprised that they made a story out of this, despite Mo having drink and alcohol with his friends before. You can adjust the timeline of the show and... To, to make an appropriate episode, and I thought this was a good use of that. And I'm not the only one that does a lot. I'm not the only one that likes this episode. It's been pretty much praised by a lot of fans as I've seen so far. So I'm not the only one uh, that actually really liked this. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. This is easily one of my top five of the season. So you'll probably see it on my list, uh, which I hope to get out very soon for my best and worst episodes of The Simpsons. So stay tuned for that. Next, we have Bob's Burgers and their season finale, Vampire Disco Death Dance. This is a Bob Tina episode. Uh, they go on a father-daughter event to watch an old movie that Bob saw. It's a rated R movie. And then, you know, Tina um, Tina feels like she doesn't have a lot of friends other than her four friends, I guess, Tammy, 
Jocelyn, Zeke, and Jimmy Jr., so she invites them to come hang out, but then they, they're obsessed with some drinking game instead. Elsewhere in the supply, uh, Linda decides to have a little restaurant for raccoons, which is kind of amusing at first, but it doesn't really do anything, to be honest. So, as I said with the supply, it's mostly nothing. I thought it was kind of a snore to get through. It wasn't funny at all. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. I'm, I'm not going to focus too much on it. Uh, I thought the main was better. The main was better, but it wasn't great either. Uh, I like the idea, you know, how it sets up the episode uh, with Bob telling Tina about the thing. And then she uh, is hesitant because, you know, oh, Tina wants to invite her friends to do something that she likes to do. Because, oh, they all like to play drinking game. The drinking game, they're all playing a game with a cup and a straw. And then the friends have to figure out if they're actually drinking or not drinking from their cup. Well, well, they're not drinking alcohol, but but I mean, but I mean, whatever they're drinking in the cup. So, uh, and 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 it's fun for a little bit, but then I realize that the friends get really annoying when uh, when they end up not watching the movie with them, and then when they go in to watch the movie, they keep talking, and that gets Tina upset. Uh, I, I felt. I felt kind of bad for Tina because, you know, even though I sometimes don't like her, uh, you can definitely uh, feel bad for her because her friends aren't respecting her and they aren't, and you know, if, if they want to come and do things, then they should be part of the experience, you know, watching the movie. Even though they end up watching the movie kind of at the end when Tina and Bob go outside, it doesn't really change the fact that they ruined the experience for Tina. And I feel like th that made me like the episode less because of how the friends are characterized. You know, with the exception of Tammy, because Tammy's Tammy. The, I think the other three friends weren't really in much of character. And uh, the, there's a good heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Bob and Tina and how, you know, oh, Bob went alone and he realized that he doesn't need friends to be part of the experience, which I thought was, pre which I thought was a pretty nice way to wrap up the... Uh, so I guess it was decent, you know. I think the subplot majority brought this episode down because I thought it was just really boring. Like, I had almost no reaction from the subplot whatsoever. So, yeah, it's not a great finale, but it's fine. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. Next up, we have Bless the Hearts and their supposedly season 2 finale, even though it's not now because there's no more episodes. Tony with an I. Uh, this is a... Jenny Louise kind of episode where uh, Jenny uh, t uh, ends up when Jenny has to move Louise's car because you know Louise orders Jenny to move her car uh, she ends up parking too close to a truck uh, that has a bunch of rocks on it and one of the rocks falls onto the uh, the front windshield and dings her dings Louise's car so then Jenny and so then Brenda tells Jenny to make up a lie and then this causes like multiple things to it, it causes like a chain reaction like. It's kind of like a domino effect where like, oh, one bad thing leads to another bad thing. And then it causes Louise to kind of have a midlife crisis. Meanwhile, you have uh, Travis uh, claiming himself to be a healer to heal Wayne after he gets stung by a bee. Uh, so I'll start with the subplot. I thought the subplot was... <laughs> the subplot wasn't anything great, but it was a nice way to pass the time. I liked... Uh, I, 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 like, I, I liked that Betty was... Uh, actually falling for Travis's uh, phony healing scams, <laughs> and, and and that's pretty much all I have to say about it. But but the ending of the subplot was surprisingly pretty silly, with uh, Wayne actually uh, revealing that he, he knows that Travis's healing thing is bogus, so he actually goes to a real doctor behind his back. And then when Travis finds out, he's like, "That's the nicest thing you said about me." <laughs> which was kind of a little unexpected but expected at the same time because you know they're buddies but I, I thought it was just kind of silly fun for the most part it wasn't anything like it wasn't anything grand or anything but it was a nice way to pass the time uh, meanwhile with the main plot uh, I, I liked it with the exception of Brenda being annoying because I thought Brenda was rather annoying in these past two episodes because you know what last week you have Brenda um, being majority take, 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 while Jenny's give, give, give. And this week, uh, you know, Brennan gives terrible advice to Jenny, and then this causes Louise to go through a chain reaction of things. So first, uh, she ends up uh, having to go talk to... She Well, first, it ends up kind of good for her because she ends up going on a date with someone, but then it ends up being bad because it turns out that the that man was cheating on his wife. So, and then... 
And then, uh, and then when Louise goes to repair her car uh, and she reads a magazine, someone steals her purse and she loses her wallet and everything. So she kind of changes her identity because her identity was stolen. <laughs> I, I I don't know why, because it obviously doesn't work like that. But <laughs> it was just it was just funny how she changed her identity out of the blue, and she starts calling herself Tony with an I, because. T O N I, not T O N Y, <laughs> hence the episode name, uh, which I thought was, which I thought was surprisingly pretty amusing, and uh, all this came because uh, Jenny followed Brenda instead of following her Jesus Christ advice, and then, uh, and then it, and then, uh, it kind of, it kind of brings up something on the side where Jenny tries to repaint Jesus after a water leak from the top of the building ends up splashing Jesus off the painting so she tries to repaint him <laughs> and, and it kind of provides for some uh, amusing moments where, 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 where like where like Jesus says like oh my mouth is too small my hands are too big my face is lopsided <laughs> it, it, it provides for some uh, surprise provides for some amusing Jenny Jesus moments and I feel like this episode really focused a lot on Jesus which I thought was a good thing because you know we've only seen him through uh through a few uh, moments like oh he's only there for maybe one or two minutes but this episode featured him a lot more and it was nice to showcase uh more of him because i like the character surprising i'm surprised a lot of people don't like the character because i because i i think the character is a good interpretation of it even if I, even if i don't believe in the religion i i think it's a good interpretation of how people who go to church might believe in that stuff i, I again i don't go to church so may, maybe maybe my interpretation of it is bad but 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 from what i know of it i i feel like it's fine to be honest uh because because i i feel like other jesus's and other shows especially family guy just get rather annoying to me i, I don't like how they're portrayed or anything but but this is a jesus i can get behind and uh, it kind of ends up with uh jenny and them telling the truth and then louisa decides to keep her persona because you know she feels so much better uh, she, she's no longer scared or worried about things, uh, and, and she says like it was a gift from God. So, so it ends up being pretty nice, despite Brenda being pretty annoying for the most part. So, yeah, overall, I, I I'm surprised. Uh, like, I'm surprised that I'm, this this was surprisingly would have been a pretty good season finale episode if the show got renewed for season three. So, yeah, it, it was nice. Uh, nothing grand, but. It, but it certainly wasn't uh, bad at all. Uh, and finally, we have our two-part, one-hour season two premiere of Duncanville. With Das Banana Boot comes first, uh, where Duncan and the family go on summer vacation after Duncan doesn't have to go to summer school for the first time. Uh, uh, so then Jack and Annie uh, end up being annoyed. Well, I mean, Annie ends up being annoyed with another vacation couple who wants to hang out with them, Annie and Jack, the parents. Uh, Kimberly gets a makeover. Uh, Duncan continues to stalk Mia's Instagram after while they're going to vacation, he sees her with another boy. And yeah, and that's pretty much it. So to be honest, I thought this episode was kind of all over the place, to be honest, and it kind of isn't in a good way because it doesn't really establish that much. Like, like for example, with the Kimberly subplot, it's just, okay, Kimberly gets a makeover and then and then she's like, she gets a makeover, and then she doesn't. Re she realizes that boys don't like her, and then, and then she gets with another boy, and then he, he ends up having a makeover too after they fall in the water and they lose all their, you know, their, their, their lookups, their touchups. Uh, it, it, it's just nothing to me. It, it, it didn't really do anything for me. Uh, maybe I got a small chuckle, but I honestly don't remember. And the episode just aired yesterday, so. I don't remember too much about it, but I thought that was mostly the more nothing one of the bunch. The Duncan one fantasizing over Mia is was, uh, even though in the beginning I got a good laugh, uh, th that plot was also kind of nothing too until until the end where it kind of uh, has a good moment where he ends up going to talk to Mia and then she reveals that oh it was her ex and and, and then when she tries to get close to Duncan he runs away. It's it's it's, it's actually kind of funny, but. but but, but it takes such a long time to get to the good stuff that uh, I, I didn't feel like it was that great. Uh, Jack and Annie's plot is easily the best of the three, but it, but, uh, but I felt like, I mean, I, I guess, I guess I could say that one was pretty good. 
it, even though it was a kind of a Parks and Recreation, it brings uh, Adam Scott and Aubrey Plaza from Parks and Rec voicing a couple named Nick and Nina who then annoy Annie and they want to hang out with Jack and Annie on everything. And then uh, when Jack, and then when they annoy him, so then Annie tells Jack that they can't hang out anymore. So then Jack tells Nick that they can't hang out anymore. So then Nick's like, oh, it's cool, it's cool, if your wife doesn't want to hang out with us. But then, uh, then it turns into, I, I, I think it was fine until then, but it, it gets better once uh, they, they bring in the twist of them uh, feeling uh, betrayed or feeling like, th feeling like they're not worthy friends, so then they end up taking revenge by stealing their boat. And then it kind of gets into a, like a bra battle with... With, with the two couples fighting uh, over the banana boat, and eventually Jack and Andy get the boat and leave uh, Nick and Nina there to die, and then uh, and then when they uh, so then when they don't come back, they feel like oh they might have committed murder, but it turns out that Nick and Nina uh, use that as a ploy as a scam to get a free vacation with every couple, so they annoy every couple. Uh, then, then kind of, oh, it's cool, break up with them, and then kind of steal their things, and then like go and steal their things, and then uh, purposely lose the battle. So uh, then the other couple feels guilty that they murdered them. So, so which I thought was pretty good, but eh, for the most part, I, th this episode didn't really get a lot of laughs out of me, to be honest. With the exception of the, with the exception of the Duncan Mia thing, I I wasn't like fully laughing. I but it, it was fine, to be honest. But uh, the the other episode, Duncan's New Word, is much better than this. Uh, I'm I'm surprised. I thought this one would be better than Duncan's New Word because I felt like the Duncan's New Word would be like, oh, okay, he says the one thing he never says to his dad, and then and then it doesn't really go anywhere with any, anything. But but I'm surprised. I was actually quite surprised. But this episode was actually pretty good uh, because uh, yeah, he does say the one thing that you should never say to your parents, but it kind of leads into an interesting angle of things because you know uh, Jack is emotionally insecure as a father and it's because his father was abusive to him uh, so that means when, when Duncan says that thing to his dad uh, he doesn't like punish him he, 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 he just goes into a kind of emotional state where he's like stuck and he thinks Duncan has more power over him because of how weak of a father it is he it kind of explores that thing in a really good way uh, and, and, you know, Annie doesn't really do much about it, which, which is fine, because then it leads to Duncan, uh, Duncan's dad having to confront his dad, which is Duncan's grandfather, uh, but, which, by the way, Gerald McRaney does an awesome job, he, he was so good in Filthy Rich, which was, a one season Fox, uh, drama that was cancelled recently, which I, I surprisingly really liked, uh, I, I really wish it could have gotten a season two, but, they surprisingly got a really good guest star from Gerald McRae. I thought, out of all the guest stars for the one hour premiere, Gerald was easily the best one. Just well, well voiced, good voice acting, good characterization, everything about it was great. And uh, on the side, uh, you have Kimberly and Jing spending more time together after they realize that, oh, Duncan can do bad things and get away with it, so, th so they want to be rebellious too. So, <laughs> surprisingly, it was pretty fun because, yeah, they do fun things together, like, oh, like, explode a building or play with a horse. <laughs> and playing with a horse was easily the best part of it because uh, Kimberly, uh, uh, Jing wants to hop on the horse, and then Kimberly's like, oh, the plan was to post Malone our, uh, our face, or, or I think it was the horse face, but we walked all the way here, which surprisingly is really accurate and funny to me. Because you know Paul Small has a ton of stuff on his face. <laughs> and, and that really got a good laugh out of me. That was probably easily the best moment of the one hour premiere, if I'm being honest. Uh, and then uh, going back to the, and And then uh, it turns out that Annie had the horse back then, which kind of leads into a kind of flashback story where she used to ride the horse as the meter maid, but then when they gave her a, a kind of cart, she ends up abandoning the horse. <laughs> and then the horse kind of destroys the cart in the end. I kind of expect the cart to be brought back. Uh, this show doesn't seem like a show that would be more into continuity uh, and such. Uh, anyways, uh, if we're going back to the main plot, uh, I think... Uh, no, no, no. no I think, I know. Uh, so then they go to confront Duncan's dad. And you know, his dad's like, oh, it's so great to see you, but it turns out that uh, it's kind of a twist where uh, Duncan's dad uh, still has that uh, mean spirit nature where he's just using Jack 
to be nice as he's older because you know maybe then jack thought he had alzheimer's he forgot and then you know oh he has a good bond with his dad but his dad turns out to be the same shitty person so then uh duncan tells jack that he should say the same thing to his dad and which he does and then they run away so i was surprised to be honest because uh it, because they, because it tackles the thing in a kind of good way and Knowing Mike is a comedian, and it, th this was actually based on a true story from him when he said uh, th when he said that thing to his dad. So, uh, so I I'm not sure how it ended up on his end because he's never said anything. But I was surprised at how much I liked this episode. I, I wouldn't say it's I wouldn't say it's amazing, but but I was surprised it was actually pretty it was actually pretty good. So so far this is the better one of the two i seriously hope this isn't the best episode because i will be i'll be disappointed in season two if this is the best episode but but i, I don't want to jump to conclusions i'm sure we'll get better than this this is season two of duncanville after all there's room for the show to improve and i, I think it can it's got great people behind it great writers great actors i i just think they need to kind of find their niche so yeah again a good episode so those are my thoughts on these five episodes. Uh, you know, uh, other than maybe Bob's Burgers, I, I thought everything else was fine, to be honest. Everything else was good. Not fine. Good. So, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.